Hello everybody, uh, I'm back doing a chronological review of the Dragon Ball Z games on the PlayStation 2. Uh, of course, I start off with Budokai Tenkaichi 1 for the PlayStation 2. Uh, this game was released in 2005, the same year as Sagas or GT Transformation. The American name is Budokai Tenkaichi, but the Japanese name is Sparking, I believe. Uh, this is due to the... Uh, some legal stuff, contract or whatever. You can change the game settings the way you like here. Okay, this game has many modes. Z Battle Gate, which is a story mode, the main mode, you know, self explanatory. Ultimate Battle, where you basically fight uh, over 100 opponents. These 100 opponents get stronger every time you fight them. And sometimes you could skip some of these battles. Uh, I like how this is carried out in Tenkaichi 3 uh, via. What is it called? Disc Fusion, yeah. Uh, World Tournament, that's self-explanatory. Dual Link, self-explanatory. Practice. Uh, the practice got worse with Piccolo teaching us how to do it without doing it how they would in Budokai 3 or Budokai 2 or 1. Here we have Evolution Z. Uh, Evolution Z is one of the new things in this game. Basically, you customize your attributes. Uh, Instead of gaining new moves like you would for the original Budokai games. In the original Budokai games, your slots would be used to have new moves or whatnot. But in these slots in these games, they would basically uh, be like health up four or whatnot. Because you already have your, all your moves when you unlock or play as a character. Uh, I think the main thing everybody remembers about this game is probably the gameplay. It's a lot different than the Budokai series. It's a different take on Dragon Ball Z fighting. It's I think it's a lot more closer. It's not as good as Budokai 3. It's actually quite a disappointment to a lot of people compared to Budokai 3, of course. Uh, that doesn't mean it's a bad game. It's just not as good as Budokai 3. The beautiful thing about this game is probably the, uh, the 3D, the 3D uh, environments. You get to walk around the free row. Uh, the amount of characters is amazing. Uh, the Budokai series, Budokai 1, had about 21 or 23 characters. Uh, Budokai 2 had about 35. And Budokai 3 had about 43, uh, I think. As you can see, in this game, it has the complete Ginyu Force. And some characters like the Doria that weren't available for a while. He was in Budokai 1. I like how you can actually play as a lot of the characters that contribute to the Dragon Ball Z story for once. It's awkward play against just Raccoon and uh, Ginyu. Like I was saying in gameplay, you just noticed that there was a minor issue. There are, is bad, there's bad flight control. The gameplay is stiff. Uh, you only get 5 hit combos unless you continue it by pressing X or Triangle. Uh, a lot of the, the energy blasts and special attacks are the same. They're similar in almost every way. Like that. That is the most overused move in this entire game. I can't say it enough because that is one of the main issues with this game. It's a tragedy. Like, If you're going to focus so much on the graphics and, and new gameplay and whatnot, you might as well make it good. Uh... Like I was saying, the characters, there are so many characters. GT, movies, char movie characters. I was looking forward to this. It's really great. You can even play as Hercule, but he's been in the games for a while now for some odd reason. They finally have Majin Buu, Pure, Pure Evil, and whatnot. Uh, a lot of these characters, but there's no in-game transformations, which is a disappointment. It doesn't, it doesn't add to the DBZ feel. It kind of is awkward. Okay. Uh, also, there are a few glitches in this game that are very noticeable, such as the Dragon Ball glitch where you would keep fighting uh, Super Saiyan 3 Gold Tanks against uh, Boo seven times, you get the Dragon Ball every single time. Uh, there is also the glitch of the Japanese voices added in Trunks and in Super Saiyan 4 Goku, depending on a fight. Those are like the only glitches I think. No, I had one glitch in the story mode. It was a real issue. I can't play the story mode anymore because of the glitch. Uh, 
what would I give this game out of 10? I would give it a 6 or a 7 due to the fact that it is a Dragon Ball Z game, which is a great thing, but there are many of them. Uh, the environments are amazingly large and detailed like you see right now. The characters are great looking, but the moves are terrible. They're so generic. They have no, no sense of aim. Uh, and the cutscenes that they have for the story mode are very, very stiff. Uh, pros, like I was saying, was the characters. And cons were basically gameplay uh, issues. They're kind of minor considering that Tenkaichi 2 and Tenkaichi 3 and the Raging Blast series and Ultimate Tenkaichi fixed this a lot. This is a decent enough game. You could still buy it. It's only like $5. And it's the beginning of like an entire franchise. Well, not franchise, but series. Rate, comment, subscribe.